Hey everyone, I thought I'd do a quick 10 tips to keep yourself organized and digitally sane while using Google Drive. So let's go ahead and start off with number 10. Keep it all in Google Drive. It sounds simple, but the fewer places you have to look for something, the easier it will be to find. So keeping things in Google Drive also helps you find files on the go or at home. So whenever possible, put it in Google Drive. Don't worry about splitting your time between network drives, Dropbox, or any other type of online sharing. Tip number nine is become a search ninja. Google doesn't mind that all your files are everywhere because it relies so heavily on the capability of its search bar found within Google Drive. Now, probably the most useful button in this search bar is the little arrow here that says search options. And when you click on that, you'll notice that the first box says file type. So maybe you don't remember exactly what your uh, file is called that you're looking for, but you can narrow it down by having it filter just your folders, just your documents, spreadsheets, slide presentations, PDFs, photos, and videos. So that's one way that you can use the search bar. Another useful thing is that Google allows you to type in search shortcuts. Some of the more useful search shortcuts include typing in the word title with a colon and then maybe what your, your document is called. You can also do it for things like show me all of the documents that were after a certain date but before another date. So it really takes uh, search shortcuts and helps you find what you need a lot quicker. Tip number eight is star important files. If there are files you reference frequently throughout the year, star these files so that they can get placed in their own unique section of Google Drive. So say for instance, I wanted to take this particular file down here and give it a star so that it appeared in the starred section of my Google Drive. All I have to do is click once to highlight it and then right click and then click add star. By adding a star, when I click on the start section, it'll show all the files I've given a star to. Tip seven is to color code your Google folders. Now, if you notice on the screen here, I've got a lot of folders. And sometimes it's hard to find a folder when you've got so many on the screen here. But what makes it easier is that I've started to color code my folders so just by looking for a particular color I can find that folder much quicker. So to color code a folder you're simply going to click once to highlight the folder and then again right click and choose change color and you can choose any of the uh, colors offered there on the right. Tip six is mainly for teachers but perhaps there's other people who can use uh, this particular tip as well and that is to number your assignments. Numbering your assignments will allow you to organize your curriculum in the order that you use it during the year. It also allows students to quickly find assignments in Google Classroom, especially in that stream section where things just get placed one on top of the other. So if you, re if you repeat this naming convention both in your Google Drive and in your Google Classroom, it'll keep yourself much more organized. And what that naming convention does is it uses a series of three digit numbers to name the file. So here you would name a file like you normally would, but in the front you would just start naming your file starting with 001 and then continue by adding one right after another throughout the year. Now you'll notice that when I go to sort and I click on name, it goes ahead and organizes all of my files in the order that I'm going to use them throughout the year. So this makes it really helpful if I had a semester class and I had to just resubmit the same work from semester to semester, but if I was a student trying to find something that you posted in Google Classroom, it's a lot easier for me to find 006 Great Awakening rather than you just tell me Great Awakening and then me having to go through the stream and find it. Tip number five is how to store files in more than one folder. Believe it or not, a file in Google Drive can live in more than one folder at a time. Now most of you are pretty familiar with how to move a file in general. To do this we just click once to select the file, right click, and we can select Move To. 
However, if you wanted this particular file not only to be in this folder, but another folder as well, you can click once to highlight it and then press Shift Z and you should get another menu that pops up that says Add To. What this will do is allow you to also have that file live in a different folder while still maintaining it in the current folder that it already is. Tip 4 is a little bit longer but equally as important as all the other tips and that is to understand sharing workflows. Now part of keeping yourself organized in Google Drive is how you go about sharing files. And it's important that when you share a file with someone that you ask yourself two important questions. The first is, is this a living document that multiple people will be working on? The second question you should ask yourself is, do you want to physically place the same document that you are working on in a selection of Google Drives or would sharing the link to the file suffice just as well? In regards to the question of, is this a living document that other people will be working on? It's important to realize that if the document is purely informational and will not be changed or edited by anyone in the future, consider prompting people to make their own copy of the file. And let me show you how to do that. If I were to click on a Google Doc right here, you'll notice that every Google Doc ends in a slash edit. Now, some documents might have additional characters after the word edit, but they all at least start with this slash edit. Now, normally I'd come over here to share and then give everyone this link if I wanted to give them access to this particular file. Now, if I were to erase edit, keep the slash, but then write the word copy and then send them this link with it saying copy instead of edit, when they click on that particular link, it'll prompt them to make a copy for themselves rather than you giving them a link which they continually have to click on anytime they want to reference that particular document. Now comes the question of whether or not you want to physically place the same document you are working on in a person's drive or would sharing a link to the file suffice. If you type in someone's email address under the share settings, which is right here, it actually places the same file you are working on into their shared with me section of their Google Drive. Now, I'd only recommend this for living documents and for sharing with only small groups of people because it'll make it easier to manage later on. If you share a living document with large groups of people, if that group ever changes, it may be hard to go ahead and take those people out if you have to scroll through a long list of people who you've shared that document with. Now you can also share a document with someone by sharing a link. If someone shares a link to a document with you, you will always need to click on the link in order to see the document. So it's important that you put the link somewhere that gives people access to that link frequently. Sometimes if you send a link in an email, a person would have to always go back to that email in order to see that file. But if you posted it somewhere public, that link always stays there so that people can go ahead and get that document. But when you share a link with someone by clicking on the Get Shareable Link button, you can change your share settings to Can Edit. So you could, in essence, still turn this into a living document. But this is more for people who you would share that only need to view the document or if you have a rather large group of people and you don't want to have to always manage the people um, in a list if you were to type in their email address. Now, because you're sharing the link with someone, it does not place a physical copy in that person's Google Drive. Now, another helpful tip is to move files out of the Share With Me section and into your drive. This helps you keep track of those files that you might need to reference frequently, but forget whether it was a file that you actually created or it was just a file that someone shared with you because Google places um, files that are shared with you in a different section than files you actually create. 
All right. So when you are added as a collaborator on a document, remember that a copy of the document is physically placed into the shared with me section of your Google Drive. Now here you'll see all the different uh, files that people have shared with me. Now if I want to add one of these files to my drive section here, all I have to do is click on the document and then up here you'll see where it says add to my drive. So what it will do is once I click this button, it'll move this file into my drive and I can place it somewhere where I could you know, more easily find it. This next tip is probably one of my favorites and I think probably one of the most useful ones that we've covered um, here in this video. And that is to create a resource folder. Now, if I create a folder, I can share the entire folder rather than having to go through every single file within that folder and share it. So let me kind of explain how that works. You'll notice here that on this folder that I've shared it with other people because it has a little person on it whereas the one above it does not have a little person on it. When you see the little person on a folder it means that you shared the entire folder with other people. And what's nice about this is that now that this folder is shared with other people, any file that I place into that folder will automatically be shared with those same people. So if I have files on my drive, if I drag them into that folder, those files should automatically be shared with the people who have access to the folder. Now if I want to create something new, best practice that I tell people is to make sure that you're already inside the folder. So if I click inside this folder, and I go to new, let's say Google Docs, I'll be prompted with something that says create in a shared folder and it tells me that since I'm in a shared folder the created item will have the same sharing permissions as the selected folder. So the folder itself always takes the top sharing permissions. If you need some files in the folder to be viewable by some people but not others, you have to go to those individual files and change them. But if you simply just drag them into the folder or if you create a brand new document within that folder, it will take on the same sharing permissions as the folder itself. The final tip that I'll give is probably the most advanced um, but also you know, quite helpful if, if it really serves uh, purposes as far as keeping yourself organized and finding things a little bit easier using Google. And that is to create a resource site. So if you are part of a group that is constantly sharing documents with one another, perhaps another option would be to create a resource website where documents can be posted and people can go get them at their leisure. So I suggest that if you have one person who's pretty familiar with Google Sites that you let them create the site and upload the documents and then everybody has a central location to go and get those documents. Now what makes a resource site so helpful is that it doesn't clutter up your drive. These files live somewhere else and then you only get them if you actually take the initiative to go find them. So say for instance I created a you know a staff resource website and I had a section on social and emotional learning resources. I was the creator of this site. Again, it's best practice that only one person do this just to make sure that people aren't overriding other people's uploads. But now, if I needed to find some resources on that, I can create a customizable file cabinet um, of different resources that I can go to and download at my leisure. So here I can sort by URL. So by clicking on any of these documents, it will actually prompt me to make a copy of that file for me to keep. And as this list grows longer, I can sort by resource name, description, um, who submitted it, and you can add plenty more uh, sortable columns if you wanted. So if it was by department or if it was by um, course name, so you can get creative of how you want people to sort your documents, but really the benefit of this particular section is that there's a spot for the URL that links 
a person back to that document so they can go get it. Because if you just email them a link or you share it with them, throughout the course of the whole year, it could be really hard to go ahead and find that document. But if documents are always posted to one central location, anytime you need to find something, I just go to this resource site and go ahead and get it myself. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 tips for staying organized in Google Drive. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me and I'll do my best to go ahead and answer them.